you're tuning in to see Dr. Brian. This is Heidi Brennigan. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here at AERC. And uh, we have brought Dr. Brian um, on Facebook Live today to discuss um, toothbrushing in our pets and why that's something that we should care about. Um, Dr. Brian, why don't you share what you have to say? Hi, Heidi. It's really great to hope that everyone's safe and doing well. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. So, uh, Heidi, you'll have to rein me in if I get a lot. <laughs> a little but, too um, <laughs> I think it's, it's one of those things that's always been important, but I think especially now, you know, we're all shut in with our fur family. And, you know, at the time you may have been able to go to the groomer and your groomer may have been brushing your dogs or cat's teeth. Um, you know, we're with, we're with our pets and um, we're noticing more, but it's, it's always been important. Um, so yeah, I want to go over some things of what you can do. And, um, but again, no stress. We want to make it fun for you and for your furry family member. Um, but it is really important. Yeah. And we'll be taking your questions today. So if this is something that you've tried in the past and you've struggled with, certainly let us know, or if you have questions about products for your pets, um, just type them in the comments and we will be addressing those as well. Yeah. So a lot of things I want to cover is why, why we should do it. How, how do we do it even with kitties? Um, what should we use? And um, again, what can we do if we can't, if we can't brush? So um, just to kind of get started as to why, um, yeah. you, you know, you can imagine if you didn't brush your teeth and, you know, if we all just finished having lunch and you kind of go, mm, you know, that would, that would be awful. I had onions um, today and I still <laughs> taste onions. So I can't even imagine. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the same thing happens in, in our pet's mouth with their teeth. Plaque, which is that kind of gunky white stuff d develops. Um, sure. And it, it just, it normally develops. And um, if it's not disrupted or removed, it eventually hardens and becomes the calculus or the tartar that we see. Okay. And um, plaque biologically is the cause of the inflammation of periodontal disease. And so animals can get lots of dental disease, um, but 70% of animals by the time of pets, by the time they're three years old, already have some form of dental disease. So that's oh, wow. cats and dogs. Yeah, so it develops really quickly in some ways, but in other ways we think about, wow, if we didn't brush our teeth for three years, it, you know, it's, it's sort of, that's not, that's not surprising. So no, I guess you're right. yeah. So we, um, we really want to talk to people about, and a lot of your, a lot of general practitioners are going to talk to you about this at several different times. When you come in with your well puppy and kitty visit, along with all the other information you get as a pet parent, that's a really important skill to start, you know, just like you get them used to walking on a leash and get them used to having their, their toes touched. And that'd be one thing too, people viewing this video, go back to the nail trimming one because you guys did a great job about how to make it fear-free, sustainable, how to go slow and the same kind of things we want to do for toothbrushing too. Okay, great. Um, another, another reason is you may just have gotten your dog or cat's teeth cleaned professionally. And then, so everything is starting out nice and fresh. And that's another time then to start developing brushing. And we'll talk about some of the challenges with that, especially if you have a, you know, a already established adult dog. Um, and again, you may be noticing things, you know, odor, doggy odor, doggy breath is not dog normal. Breath. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So the, the, Brushing is really best. Studies show that brushing, just like with our teeth, if we think of it like a pyramid, that's kind of the top. That's really the best thing we can do. And again, that's what we do with our teeth every day. We brush our teeth every day, hopefully twice a day, right. and still go to the dentist to have examined. So it's really important to, again, disrupt that plaque so that we can remove it before it has a time to set up shop and cause disease. Okay, so we're not talking about an either or proposition here. It's not, if I brush my dog's teeth every day, we can skip those dentist visits. Or 
if I have my dog's teeth professionally cleaned once or even twice a year, then I don't have to brush. Is that right? Right. It's not one or the other. It really is. It's and it's both. Okay. And, and that's maybe one thing too, is, you know, if you've had pets for your whole life, this may be, you know, the first time you've ever heard about it or, or it's been a while, or maybe your veterinarian has said, oh, everything looks fine. We don't have to do anything. And so sometimes that's because one, as a profession, this has been an area that's been ignored. Okay. And two, um, we aren't always very good about talking about prevention. We, we know what to do as doctors about treating disease, but really, uh, we, we really need to prevent it. So while everything's healthy, is really when, that's when we can prevent periodontal disease, definitely. Okay. Um, certain breeds, I have a Boston Terrier, you know, they have a mushy face, everything, nothing sits normally, all the teeth are stacked up side by side. Um, you know, you Heidi have, have Sally, who's this little teeny thing. Yeah. So certain breeds also have more, more issues. Um, but studies also show that owners that are able to consistently do something in their pet's mouth with daily home care, they notice things way sooner, much sooner than we would on a once a year or twice a year examination. Um, in the exam room. So as far as finding things early and when they're preventable or early treatable, it makes such a big difference. And so what kind of things would, might somebody want to be looking for when they're in their brushing teeth? Um, so uh, should we start with just the steps or should we? Well, just I'm just out of curiosity because you said they might find things. So like what kind oh, of yeah. things? Yeah. So that's one thing is just even you're going to notice, even if you've been established in brushing, you may notice that, oh, on this side, they seem more hesitant oh, okay. than the other side. Or you might notice at the beginning, you know, like, oh, there, there's redness, or maybe there's a little bit of blood on the toothbrush or the gauze that I'm using. Or, oh, I see a lump that I didn't notice there last week. And so, you know, you know, your fur family member best and you'll pick it up so much sooner okay but it really is being consistent and, and again doing it daily makes the difference okay as compared to every once in a while looking in the mouth yeah sure that makes sense okay thank you for clarifying that yeah so to start out again you'd want to just we want to start really slowly because whether it's a puppy or um you just had your dog's teeth cleaned they may, this is overcoming an evolutionary thing that they're just not used to having their mouth examined. So I, the first step is you want to be comfortable um, and, and come to the pet's level. Um, if they're on, on your lap while you're watching TV in the evening, that's fine too. Um, but, but it's not a matter of, you know, chasing after them, um, you know, be, be down their level. And you're going to just start with what I call face love and just do a lot of petting along the lips and, and the face and just get them used to those really short sessions. So treats nice and short. If they seem to resist or start getting antsy, it's time to be done. So start out with 10, 20 seconds. And, and again, every day, and that's one thing I find our pets love the attention. They, they, want, they want to interact with us. Um, we as humans uh, fall down in that because it takes six to eight weeks for something to become a habit. Yeah. And so try to link it to something that you enjoy doing with your pet and something that your, you know, your cat or dog already enjoys doing. And you know, again, you know your, that family member best. Is it, do they love a favorite toy? Do they have a favorite treat? Is before meal time a happy time? Is it you know when you get the leash out? Um, I have some owners that they go brush their teeth, they go and get out the pet's tooth, toothbrush and toothpaste, and then do it. So establishing a habit means doing it consistently. And then I want to jump in here for a second, Dr. Brian, because um, there was a really good tip that you gave me when I first started to brush Sally's teeth. Um, you said, and I didn't listen to you at the time. You said, um, make sure to involve the family in this because you don't want to be the one person who's trying to do this every night. And you were 100% right. And at the time I was like, well, I'm the one who does everything that has to do with the dog. Of course, I can do it by myself. Life gets in the way. And right. that toothbrushing for that dog is probably one of those first things to fall by the wayside when it does. And so it wasn't until I got my husband involved and if I was busy with the kids, he would do the dog's teeth or vice versa, that it really started happening on a regular basis. So I thought that was a really good tip. 
That's great to hear. And especially I think now when everyone is stressed, I certainly don't want this to become the one more thing you should do. Right. Um, because again, we need to be forgiving of each other, but, but knowing um, that this, this is helpful. But I think again, it, it, if we can involve everybody, it doesn't have to be you brushing the teeth, but if it could be done consistently and just become part of their routine. Right. You know, maybe you do a few tricks or sitting commands before feeding a meal. This can be incorporated into it. Okay. And, and because life does happen, um, studies show that every other day on a healthy mouth is probably adequate in a cat or a dog. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. So if you're doing it every day and miss a day, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. The other thing too is again, we know life happens. And so sometimes if you're not, if you have not been able to consistently do things, just know that, okay, there, you know, there may be more going on in your pet's mouth, but again, we're trying to, no guilt. We want everyone to feel, feel good, especially in this time. Don't feel like you've got one more thing you have to do to add during this pandemic. Definitely. Right. Um, I'm going to jump in with a question from one of our um, viewers right now. Um, this is from Rick and Rick has been to AERC. He's a very, very uh, active Facebook fan of ours. And he has dachshunds. That's his breed of choice. And um, he has a rescue one that has only one tooth. And this, uh, he, his question is, is there a modified dental vet cleaning that he could have with mild sedation? Because apparently he was traumatized by the previous oh. extractions and he won't let Rick get near that tooth. Okay. Yeah, so a lot going on there. One, yeah. because of the breed and, and that's something we see really commonly, uh, Dr. Vicari and I um, at the clinic, we see Dachshunds, you know, by the time they're seven or eight years old, especially with being a rescue situation, some of the times they don't have any healthy teeth in their mouth. So, um, you know, again, if, if there's been no home care, um, as far as a modified cleaning, um, so if the, if the dog is not going to let you anywhere near the mouth, there may be something else. Um, I'm assuming this is probably a canine tooth or, or something Actually, like that. Actually, he did specify. It says um, it's a lower incisor. Oh, okay. So it is up front. Um, that being said, any type of chew or any type of dental diet is really not going to be helpful because dogs don't chew with those teeth. Okay. They grab. Um, when we talk about the pyramid of products, so brushing, um, chew toys, diets, and then the last is a, like maybe an oral rinse or a, or a water additive okay. could be helpful. Okay. Yeah. As far as concerning um, the procedure, check with your veterinarian. However, what we can see of the tooth and what we actually clean of the crown is only about a half to a third of the tooth. So, um, Unfortunately, I, I wish, I, I mean, I hope someday we have the technology that we can scan a, a dental x-ray and we can do it while they're awake. Unfortunately, we just can't do it while they're awake um, because we have these nice fast sensors, but they're expensive. And, and again, when you're trying to come in at your pet with a sharp instrument, that's scary too. So um, they, he may want to talk to his veterinarian and just to find out, because if it is one incisor, um, while I really hate to extract healthy teeth, sometimes it's just not worth leaving one tooth that can't be, can't be um, adequately cared for. And it, it's, it's clearly, pets are able to make do without any teeth. Is that correct? Right. They luckily, you know, we, we provide everything they need. They don't have to go out and hunt their food down. Right. And it's more important to have a healthy mouth. And sometimes a healthy mouth means not having any teeth. I, I do have a lot of patients that um, I have to say certain breeds, Chihuahuas, Yorkies, um, Dachshunds, definitely. Sometimes by age seven or by age 10, um, they have a healthy mouth, but, but they have no teeth left. Yeah, so. yeah. And those, and those teeth, I mean, if, it, if they're diseased and they're in there, they're probably causing pain, I'm guessing. Right, and so that could also be another reason as to why the dog doesn't let him approach it. Him. Okay. You know, and that's one thing too, as you're, if you're trying to brush and you seem to like, I can't, I can't get any further or he's not letting me go to the next step. Uh -huh. If you haven't had your dog examined under anesthesia and had dental x-rays taken, there really could be some hidden, hidden disease or pain. You know, dental disease is that ache that at the end of the day, when everything has settled down, all our distractions, it's that throb yeah. that keeps you up at night. And the same thing is true with our pets. 
they they show it in different ways though. It's 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 not, you know, if you walk if you walked into the room, Heidi, and you had a toothache, how would how would I know? You would tell me, or you'd maybe be holding your face. Yeah. Um, and they really crabby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Snappy. Uh-huh. You know, maybe, um, you still are hungry. You're still going to try sure. to eat, but um, yeah, it, it's 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 a lot of other. Th- signs of I just don't I don't feel good yeah okay okay so let's get back to the brushing so um you're you're saying that um if we have a puppy or if we have an adult dog that's just had a cleaning this is a great time to start this so we don't want to just go in there with the toothbrush when we don't know what's happening in there so definitely have this checked out with your family vet get a cleaning start with a healthy mouth yeah so then we start with that positive stuff Right. And you've had good success. Now you've done a week or two of the short sessions of the face love. The next step is to introduce um, either a dog toothpaste or even a, a high value treat. Okay. So that's one thing as far as what we can use. So it really is the two ways to take care of plaque. One is physical disruption. And the second could be a chemical means. And that might mean a a chlorhexidine, which is an ingredient that works really well, Mm anti-plaque. There are other ingredients and enzymes and some products have both, but honestly, it could be, it could be warm water. So um, we could be brushing our teeth with warm water, but we're used to minty, fresh breath and foaming actions. You don't want to use human products because those need to be spit out. Okay. And um, if swallowed, that could be toxic. And then there's some uh, ingredients like sweeteners, artificial sweeteners that are toxic to dogs. But that being said, it, you could use cheese whiz. You could use for a cat. You could use tuna juice. Okay. Um, Heidi, you've posted on our, our website on the dental page. There's a link to a great video of a cat that loves chicken baby food and will do <laughs> anything for chicken baby food. So again, having that really high value treat either to apply to the, um, to just give it, give it to them. That'd be the next step. Again, you still do the face love and then introduce the treat or the, the dental toothpaste and I, I do really like, um, and any of the products I mentioned, I have no financial. Uh, We're not getting any did. kickbacks here. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I really like them. So CET has, um, this is the chicken flavored. This is their um, sample size. They also have a salmon, um, but they, but it contains enzymes too. And they're very highly palatable. So um, introduce it on your finger and let them lick it. Okay. Um, and so again, that's what you're going to do once a day um, for 10, 20 seconds, give a treat, lots of praise. Okay. The, the next step then is if you're to week three and you think you're ready, you can start then to introduce with how, what do you want to brush with? And some of this will be what your pet feels comfortable with. And some of this is what you feel comfortable with. Mm-hmm. So um, a soft child's toothbrush. This is a brush that we have. It's pretty big. So yeah. this would be more a Labrador. You know, that would not fit in Sally's mouth. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, but uh, you want, if you're going to go with a toothbrush, it should be a soft brush, okay. um, a child size. But that being said too, if you feel comfortable with a piece of gauze or your veterinarian will have like a finger brush, some uh-huh. people feel more comfortable having their fingers in the mouth. Some people don't. Okay. Again, we don't want anyone to be in danger at sure. all. And then for cats, um, there's a toothbrush that looks sort of like a Q-tip with the bristles coming off the, the front. Okay. Um, and that works really well, or even a Q-tip. But again, um, something that you're able to physically disrupt that plaque. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Gerilyn has a question about where they can, she can get the CET toothpaste. And I've just been reminding people, um, the first place you should always check is your veterinarian's online store, because a lot of these veterinarians are local businesses and they're struggling right now. So before you go to the big box store, check their online store. They should have something like this. Don't you think, Dr. Brian, if they have an yes. online store more than one? Yes, there, there are lots of products. The CET is one company that I really like. And so check with your veterinarian first. Another source is, uh, um, there is, um, a website called from the Veterinary Oral Health Council, okay. and we have a web, we have a link on our website. It's called the VOHC, 
and it, it lists products that um, companies have submitted their research. And so it, it gets the, the seal of approval saying, yes, this product actually does what it says as far as anti-plaque or anti-calculus. And there are chews there uh, listed, there are, there's oil rinse, there's toothpaste. Um, so it's a starting um, place to look at because, because the research has already been done and, and checked by an independent source. Okay. Uh, that being said, there are other companies that don't have the VOHC seal yet. And when I go to conventions and I see a, com uh, a company, uh, I always encourage them to have, you know, to do that step. Okay. Um, again, I do like two toys and that's probably would be a whole nother Facebook live we could do. Yes. About two toys. Yeah. Um, but check with your veterinarian, but I do like the sample sizes, um, or get a small tube one. What if your pet doesn't like it? Cause the, you don't want to force them to have something in their mouth that they just really despise the taste. Sure. And, yeah, sure. So, um, we do have, a, uh, pet owners, and, um, who are watching. And I think that's one of their biggest concerns is that cats in general, um, may not be as food motivated as our dogs and um, might be a lot more resistant to uh, having you do this for them. So are there, there's a, there's a resource on our website, right? About how to do this with kitties that kind of goes into right. a little more depth. Yeah, and one thing too, you know, cats love to rub up against things because okay. they have scent glands on their lips. And what they're actually doing is they're marking whatever it is they rub on. It's like, that belongs to me. And of course, okay. we all knew that cats rule our lives. But if we can go with that, and cats do like to have their, their face rubbed. So okay. um, again, starting with that face love that way. That being said, kitties can also get what's called tooth resorption, and that is very painful. So cats that have stopped wanting to have dry food and prefer wet food. Cats that um, they start eating and they drop their food, they may hiss at it. It's, it's, it's a destructive disease that when it exposes that nerve, those cats are painful. And so they, a cat that really, if it runs away from you, it, it makes sure it's not painful first. And then again, slowly, um, fear-free, make, make it very high value, but, but it may take a while, you know, yeah. this, and again, even going through this, it, it's, it's a, it's a lifetime and it, and, and just again, forgive yourself. It may be that this pet is never going to allow you um, so you may have to go in more frequently to have professional cleanings and maybe then the next kitty or puppy that you get, you'll already be ready. Um, but, but don't give up, um, okay. you know, find out, find out if there's any pain and have that addressed first, because yeah. that's one thing if you start brushing your pet's teeth, you will not be able to remove that calculus. You'll prevent more. Um, but if there's pain, again, we don't want to reinforce a painful situation. Sure. And, and um, thank you for referencing the, um, the video that Olivia and I did about toenail trimming because um, I'm hearing the same thing about we really need to go on a timeline that our pet establishes, not the one that we want to follow. Because we might be exactly. in a rush to, you know, we want those teeth to be taken care of. And now we're concerned and we want to get on this and our pet is not on the same page. Yeah. Exactly. And so again, for substituting, possibly there are some cat treats. CET has a great cat treat um, that cats can kind of chew on um, using Kongs um, with, the tooth, with the dog toothpaste and they can chew on it is another, again, it's not, it doesn't substitute for brushing, but it can be on those days where it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're just going to try our best. Yeah. Okay. And that, that dives nicely into a question that somebody had. Um, Mary wants to know, can you talk about um, dog dental chews and do you recommend those? I do, and a, and a lot of the um, products on the VOHC website um, are, are dog chews. So again, it, it, the, they chew with their side teeth and I have a little model here. Okay. They're gonna chew with their premolars and molars, not so much with the, with the fangs um, or, the, or the incisors. Okay. Um, so you have to have teeth to chew with um, right. and, and choose. Um, so if it ends up being just a treat, that may be the motivating treat. However, if they're just swallowing it, 
there's, there's not much chewing going on. Okay. So about, you need about 10 minutes of chewing for it to be valuable as far as so working on, on brushing. Okay. They should, it should be big enough that for a chew toy, um, that they wouldn't, uh, consume it. If it's a treat they get afterward, if it's a treat they have to chew a little bit that, and it's meant to be consumed, that's one thing. But we've seen Rottweilers that are eating rawhides like potato chips right. and that there's no chewing going on. They're just consuming things that they shouldn't. Okay. Okay. And then um, what about something like um, the Hills, the TD food? Is that something that you recommend? Mm -hmm. There are a couple companies, Royal Canaan and, and Hills both have a dental diet Okay. And um, they're formulated in a really hard biscuit. So it's not just regular dry food. The way the, the matrix of the biscuit is, is when the tooth actually chews into it, it, it kind of swipes it off. Oh, There's nice. also some enzymes that are um, added that can help um, capture some of the calcium from our saliva, from the dog's saliva. So it doesn't, it helps stop uh, the plaque from adhering. Okay. But again, you have to have, um, it needs to be appropriate, you know, if your dog is on a renal diet or your cat is on you know, any other special diet for urinary, then a dental diet isn't going to, isn't going to be appropriate for your, for cat or dog. Um, but again, as part, think of it like a toolbox, um, as part of a lot of different things we could use. And that's one thing too, that sometimes owners wonder about how it take, it can take a long time to develop. It may take a month if you do these four steps it can take a month to do it, or it may take a couple months. And um, there is a, a, another product that we use professionally. It's called Oravet, and it's an anti-plaque gel that gets applied to the pet's tooth after a cleaning. Okay. Now it has to be done professionally. And so I would inquire with your veterinarian, if they just had a cleaning, I'm just gonna start out with this. This is hard for me to do. It's gonna take me a while. Can they apply the Oravet? It lasts for two weeks. And then there's a home care product that you can order that you apply once a week. And so it's a really good aid of when you're learning to do this. And again, the reason you can't just pick up the home care product, it has to bond to the product that's already been applied to your, your okay. cat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But if you're going on vacation or it's like, you know, this is going to take me a while to get used to this. Um, it, it's, it's a good, it's a good help. Okay. So, yeah. It, what about these um, water additives you mentioned at the beginning? And I know that that's pretty far down that pyramid that you talked about as far as brushing. But if I have, let's say, a cat that just, you know, the mouth is clean, it's not painful. We've established that, but the brushing is just not happening. Are there water additives that you recommend at all? There are water additives on the VOHC website. I, okay. I don't use them a lot, um, honestly, because, I mean, again, if we think about our teeth, like, we really, we really do want to try to get physical disruption of that plaque. Mm -hmm. um, I also uh, don't want to, uh, the animal then to avoid the, the you know, the, either the bubbler, the fountain, or the, or the water, because of, oh, sure. cats are so, um, smell is such a, such a big thing. That being said, though, I do know owners that use it, that, that it, it, ha it has helped a lot. A lot of times, again, it's, it's that we're, we're treating active disease. Um, so those owners, we have to, they have to brush twice a day or do an oral rinse. We see them back every six months or every three months. Okay. Um, but, but at the beginning, you know, again, if you're dealing with a healthy animal, um, it, it can't hurt, definitely. Um, but, um, you know, know, know that they may need more professional cleanings because we're not physically disrupting it, but it, but it certainly can help. Okay. And then um, Shannon uh, says her shepherd, who I happen to know is Frosty, is really good about brushing, but Porgy, uh, Twinkie, is really difficult. Uh, Twinkie loves the toothbrush and, or sorry, loves the toothpaste and hates the brush. But it sounds like the brush doesn't have to be a necessary component of this. Right. Okay. So maybe it's going to be uh, his own uh, clean washcloth or a bit of clean rag or something on your finger. Again, if you feel comfortable, or maybe it's the toothpaste applied to a, um, a Kong that you can chew on um, okay. or a, another type of toy, a chew toy type thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. And, and again, then, go, go slow. 
go with easy teeth. Um, you're not going to brush your pets. Dogs have 42 teeth. They have a lot of teeth. Cats have 30 teeth. You're not going to get all of them. Start with the easy ones that you can see and slowly build up. Okay. Um, there's a question. Um, this person's dog is on a Royal Canin weight loss diet, and they're wondering if he can switch to the Royal Canin dental diet. I'm guessing that's probably going to have to be evaluated with their family vet. Yeah, I would check with your family vet. It may be something that it could be added to um, because uh, these are not, the dental diets because of the fiber matrix are actually kind of, they have a lot of fiber, which is what a lot of the weight loss diets have. Oh. Um, check with your veterinarian. It, okay. it isn't necessarily incompatible with a weight loss. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to ask people to go ahead and enter any other questions that you have in. I think we're caught up on the questions. Did you want to talk about um, if a person has a pet that's exceptionally good for this? And, um, and I know I've, I've heard um, sometimes that veterinary technicians will do this where they happen to have dental tools at home and they're doing some scaling of those teeth at home. Did you want to talk about that? Yeah, I think, you know, how great that you're, you're so in tune with your pet and you have such a compliant pet. Usually it's a, usually it's a dog. Um, the one thing that we do want to worry about is when you're scaling and even again, when we go to the dentist there, it's a very light touch and they polish afterward. So if you're scaling your pet's teeth and you're, and it's not able to be polished with a pumice polish and a polisher, you're actually causing micro scratches on the surface. And rough surfaces, just like when you already have plaque or calculus, attracts more plaque. So I always tell people, okay, that's great. You've got this relationship and you've got a very, um, very compliant dog. Um, get your pet professionally cleaned, polished, and then switch to a power toothbrush. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, an electric toothbrush so that um, you, can, you can polish. Um, okay. I have some owners that are able to water pick their dogs. Wow. I mean, that's pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Um, and it's in, um, again, it, you have to have a, a really, you have to have a really cooperative and a very cooperative pet and a very dedicated owner. Um, so don't, don't give up on that, but I do hesitate, um, about the scratching. And again, the other thing too, is what we're doing is removing the plaque on the visible part of the tooth. The business part, the living part of the tooth is under the gum line, in the bone, there's blood vessels and nerves, and we've got the ligament. And the only way to evaluate that is with dental x-rays and probing around the tooth. And so that has to be done while the animal's um, anesthetized. Okay, all right. Um, we have one more question. Uh, this is a Yorkie poodle mix. So kind of those breeds that you were talking about that can be prone to these problems. Um, this dog has 21 teeth left, and um, the owner is wondering, can he still chew on a greenie or a CET, or a CET chew? Is that an option for a dog with, with not as many teeth? Yeah, I guess you'd want to probably check, again, not knowing that's about half the teeth. Uh -huh. So depending upon, um, and, and again, people get upset when I call and we talk about 12 incisors. Well, that adds up a lot. Um, but the, again, the incisors are in front. Um, it may be a possibility, again, with any chew toy or treat, it would be with supervision. Um, and I do always recommend um, toys that have some give. Um, they're not so hard that they would break the teeth. Um, but, but chewing may be a possibility, again, not knowing their pets, which, which 21 teeth there are. Um, right. I would check with their veterinarian and see. Okay, yeah. awesome. So, um, in summary, then we're going to start with a clean mouth or we're going to start with a puppy. A lot of people have adopted uh, puppies, which is wonderful during this time. Um, and then um, we're going to work slowly. We're going to give a lot of that face love that you mentioned, make yeah. it a really positive experience Please and work up to brushing babies. if we can. Mm -hmm. And um, you said that um, every day is ideal, but studies have shown that every other day can be okay. You know, it's, it's certainly a, a workable option. Um, mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that um, we're not trying to hand scale teeth. If we have that really, really compliant pet, it's still not ideal to be doing that. Right. Right. Yeah. And then if all else fails, there are some products, but we want to check out what is that? What are the initials of the website again? It's V O H C. And okay. we have a link on our dental page. It's the veterinary oral health council.org. 
and they have a big list of what which products have met their seal of approval. Okay, great. And to find that link, you just go to AERC.com, AERCMN.com or AnimalEmergencyMN.com. Go under services, find the dentistry and oral surgery page, and those resources are listed there for you. A lot of good stuff on that page. Um, if you have further questions, certainly make sure to leave them in the comments. And either I will get them to Dr. Brian and she will answer them or we'll get her to answer them herself straight away. And then also make sure to subscribe to our live notifications. Um, we will be doing uh, two more Facebook Lives we have scheduled. This coming Monday the 18th, we're gonna be talking about pet loss and grief because that's become awfully complicated during this time of pandemics. Euthanasia is not quite as straightforward as it was. So we're gonna be chatting about that with two veterinary social workers. And then next Thursday, we're going to be doing another um, Facebook Live with Olivia from Optical Canine. She's gonna be discussing crate training because again, lots of people, lots of new pets right now. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Brian, today. It was wonderful speaking with you. Thanks, Heidi, this was fun. Okay, bye-bye.